Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Only Choose One Work by Composer X, it would have to be Work F. Why not F? Well, Composer X is Janacek. Oh, yeah, we've been waiting for Janacek. And some of you have actually suggested the work which I totally agree with, to present to the evil god Kankrazans, to explain to him why this is, first of all, the most typical work of the composer, and second of all, why we should get to hear all the others. Particularly when you're dealing with a composer like Janacek, whose personality was so quirky, and whose character was so individual that every single thing he wrote past a certain point, like past the age of 50, it's very odd, all of a sudden he just sort of appeared, you know, late in life. But we have to have all this stuff. We just do. But if I had to choose only one work, it would have to be The Cunning Little Vixen, the opera. You were right. You guys called it. Of course it's The Cunning Little Vixen. Why? Well, Janicek's operas are extraordinary. First of all, they're short, which is marvelous. They're not much longer than like Mahler's Third Symphony, like a long symphony, an hour and 40, 50 minutes pushing it. Not too bad. Second of all, they are on the most amazing subjects. I mean, some of them are rather more conventional. Yennefer, his most popular opera. Yes, that's a sort of sort of quasi-normal subject. <laughs> well, I mean, normal and to the extent that infanticide is normal. Yes, it's normal. But I mean, it's one of those happens in a village and everyone's, you know, killing each other. And it's a love story. And, you know, that's sort of that kind of conventional. But his later ones, oh, baby, wow. First, you get Katya Kabanova, which is another kind of a love story, sort of, but one of, you know, it takes Verismo to new levels. Let's put it that way. It is so brutal and realistic in its, in its portraiture and its, its handling and the way the characters behave. It's amazing. But then, then, oh, the fun begins. I mean, I guess the fun began with the earlier one, Mr. Bruchek's Excursions to the Moon and to the 15th century, kind of a fairy tale kind of opera, sort of, kind of, but in a very strange little Czech way. But after that, we get, oh, The Cunning Little Vixen, which is the first opera based on a comic strip. And all of the characters are animals, except for the gamekeeper and his wife, and a couple poachers. You know, I mean, the human element is there, but it's, you know, the main characters are animals. And it's the only opera in which the lead soprano is called upon to defecate on another one of the characters because they're animals and animals do that sort of thing. It's just marvelous. And it's the only opera in which the lead soprano gets shot and made into a muff in act three. So there you go. But beyond that, after that one, we had the Macropolis case. I mean, a science fiction opera by the author of R.U.R., Carl Chopek, Rossum's Universal Robots, that I invented the term robot. Well, this isn't about a robot. It's about a 337-year-old opera singer or something like that who has the elixir of life that she's searching for because her last dose is wearing off. Oh, my goodness, what a story that one is. And then, then we get from the House of the Dead you know, based on Dostoevsky, which takes place in a Siberian prison camp. And and it has really no plot at all. It's just stuff happens in a Siberian prison camp. I mean, who else could do that sort of thing? And how could you pick one over the others? Because they're all marvelous. But The Cunning Little Vixen, I think, expresses a certain, you know, pantheism, which was quite typical of Janacek, the idea of the perpetual renewal of nature. He wrote it when he was like 70, and it's one of the most youthful pieces you've ever heard in your life. It's extraordinary. It's about, it's about well, it's about a fox and about, you know, the gamekeeper's relationship to nature. And, and I, I, you can't even explain what it's about because it was just a comic strip. But Janacek turned it into one of the most moving, humane, colorful, enjoyable, amazing pieces of music. Oh my God, it's incredible. It's become very successful on stages. I mean, Simon Rattle ugh, recorded it twice. 
And he believed, well, of course, he was sort of accompanying and, you know, he didn't have to like have ideas, although he did have one, which wasn't a good one, which was taking the ballet too fast at the end of act two. But that's, that's okay. I mean, you know, I mean, twice he did it. I, the record industry is insane, but it, it doesn't matter because the opera itself is just incredibly, beautifully wonderful. There is a suite. There are a couple of suites actually. Now there was one by Vaclav Talic, which is, which was, was, uh, reorchestrated and whatnot, but it's very pretty. And then there are there was another one that um Frantishek Zilek, I think, or not no not Zilek, Frantishek, well whatever his name was, one of those Czech guys. He made a uh a series of several movement suite, which is also quite lovely. And then there's the one on Naxos put together by Peter Breiner. I mean there's just because it has so much fabulous instrumental or orchestral music too. And it's full of all of those things that make Janacek Janacek, those quirky little speech melodies and the quasi folk tunes, you know, ta 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 you don't want me to do that, believe me. In Czech, you really don't want me to do that. But instead, I suggest that you go listen to it. And we make the case that even though this would be the one work by Janicek that must survive if all others are gone, oh God, we can't be without those others. They're just amazing. Just amazing pieces, They're totally original, fabulous pieces of music. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.